Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage 15 of the Vuelta España 2023. Now, today's stage, let's step back before we get a little bit further in today's stage and go back to yesterday's stage where we saw Remco Evenepoel have that big comeback after the devastating blow on stage 13. Yesterday, he solos into the win to get stage 14. And a lot of people were talking about, wow, it was so big. It was right up there with the Floyd Landis stage when we're talking about 2006 and Floyd soloed. But it's a bit different than that stage because Jumbo Visma are first, second, and third on the general classification. And Remco Evenepoel was 27 minutes down on the general classification. So not, did, not only did, was he down on general classification, but nobody quite expected that ride out of Remco Evenepoel, even though they should have seen it after the third, fourth, and especially the fifth attack that the pseudo quickstep rider put in early in the stage 14. But the big question when the cameras are coming on and you're watching GCN commentators and they're doing the interviews from pseudo quicksteps, Gert Van Bont, when we're seeing that interview right there and he's saying, well, maybe Remco Evnepoel will do it again today if his legs are feeling good. Then we see the interview from Remco Evnepoel and he says he's going to try today as long as he's feeling good. Well, it's a little bit different stage today at 158 kilometers, three categorized climbs. One's a category three that's a monster. It's almost about 20 kilometers long, but it's going to summit with about 80 kilometers to go on today's stage. And then they have two of the same climbs that they're going to do twice at the very finish. It's going to start with 45 kilometers to go. And the second one is going to finish with about nine, nine kilometers just under downhill all the way into the finish. That climb is not a monster climb. It's a category two climb at just over 5% and 6.3 kilometers long but it's not a, a special climb like we had on yesterday's stage 14. Well, we start seeing the actions when the, when the camera comes on at about 95 kilometers to go. Ramco Abner pulls up in the front group of three and he's driving it like crazy. Now that group's gonna swell in size, but let's go back down and look at the peloton of GC favorites because we see UAE team Emirates attacking left and right all over the place. And of course you have Sepp in the race leader's red jersey following moves. You got Primoz Roglic following moves and you got Jumbo Visma bringing stuff back left and right with that group up front with Remco Evnepoel starting to swell. Well, now we're at about 90 kilometers, 87 kilometers to go in the race. And you see that group's pretty large of about 20 plus riders up front. And you see UAE Team Emirates, I believe that's Solaire on the front throwing in attack. There's a little bit of a gap. Remco Evnepoel closes the gap. Solaire comes back and then we see Jonas Vini go in this front group. He's like, I don't want this group to work. Why do I need this group to come to the line? I got Sepp Kuss wearing the race leader's red jersey back there so I don't have to do anything. And then all of a sudden we start seeing that group and that's why it starts to slow down because the chemistry with having UAE Team Emirates and of course, having Jumbo Visma in this front group not willing to work is going to slow this group down. And that's why you see in the back of the picture with this group of 21, you start seeing the GC favorites group that's probably only about 30 guys back there coming back up to this front group. And they're going to bring everything back together with about 85 kilometers to go in the stage. Then we're going to see the next tech. It's all my old teammate Rui Costa, the ex road world champion from 2013. We were teammates on Lampre and he won 2013 when I won the Vuelta España and that happened just about 10 days after I won the Vuelta España and when I crashed out of that road world championships with phenomenal legs it was Rui Costa that won that road world championships. So he is the ex road world champion. He's going full gas. He's got Remco having to pull with him and Christian Rodriguez from our KS Samsic as they're coming up nearing the top of this KOM for this category three monster long climb not a monster climb but very long it's pretty it's pretty not that steep but it is a category three and then we're going to start seeing guys come back up up to that group of three guys like Leonard Camden guys just dangling off the back there trying to accelerate to get up to Rim Coev the pools driving full gas well, they're going to hit the KOM with about four or five riders in this front group. Remco Evnepoel is going to get maximum points with about 80 kilometers to go on this stage. Once they go down the descent, all the guys that were in single back there trying to chase to get up to Remco Evnepoel's group is going to come back together with about 70 kilometers to go and a big group of five, six riders back there. It's going to bring this front group up to about 15 riders. Now these guys with Remco Evnepoel, you got Christian Rodriguez, who I mentioned, Santiago Butrago from Byron Victorious, Rui Costa, like I said, and Dermarche, my old teammate. Leonard Kamna from Bora Hans grows there. Nico Dins, his teammates there. Rudy Millard from FDJ's in there. Jimmy Johnson, Alba Sinda Kunick, he made it in there. 
Rubio Einar from Movistar, Andreas Krohn from Lotto Destiny, Kenny Elizon, who won on the Langaroo back in 2013, he's there, Chris Hamilton from DSM, Andreas Vendrami from AG2R, Casado is then there, and so we got a host of riders of about 14, 15 in this front group, and Albacine de Kunick have won with my man Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> I like Jimmy Johnson. I know that's not quite how you pronounce his last name, but if you say Jimmy Johnson, it's a little bit funnier to the American when you grew up watching NASCAR before all your bike races, and Jimmy Johnson's name always came up instead of Jimmy Jansen. So I call him Jimmy Johnson, and it's my show. I get to do what I want. Well, we look back in the peloton. Jumbo Visma controlled everything coming off that first Category 3 descent. Now they're riding the front with Robert Hesse. They're going to be riding the front for quite a while, and the group's going to grow in size. The peloton's going to get back to a normal-sized peloton. As we know, the first half of this race was incredibly fast because when I showed you guys all the pictures back there, the peloton blown up, you know everyone was suffering, but now it's coming all back together. We're getting under 50 kilometers to go, and Albacine de Kunic are going to start riding the peloton back there. I don't know what these guys were thinking, really. There's no chance of bringing back this kind of group with Remco Ebna pull up the front. And basically, most of the guys rotating through the front group, including Jimmy Johnson himself from Albacine de Kunic, who I saw hit the front a few times. Now, behind, what are they doing? I got to believe they're just trying to keep the peloton together or something because there's no chance of bringing back this group at two and a half minutes and two more climbs. That's a Category 2 with Remco Evnopol and Santiago Butrago, Rui Acosta up there. There's just not much chance of bringing back a quality breakaway like this with one Albacine de Kunic rider riding back there, but they're on the front anyway. The only thing I can come up with strategy-wise is they're hoping the group blows up in the front. Possibly some guys come back. Caden Groves can go up over this Category 2 climb and get some points there on Remco Evnopol, but honestly, I think I would have liked it better if the group had just not worked Albacine de Kunic, let the gap grow a little bit bigger. Maybe this group of 14, 15 riders, whatever's going to be left after these next Category 2 climbs come, maybe the gap is so big they start tacking Remco Evnopol in the flatter sections, they split the group in half, and then of course Remco Evnopol can't get any points if the time gap is a little bit bigger. If you keep it tight with Albacine de Kunic back there driving full gas, that means everyone in that break has to keep working, which is going to help Remco Evnopol keep the group together because everyone knows if they start attacking, the speed will slow down, and then Albacine de Kunic from behind might catch them. But I don't really see it happening. Instead, we hit the first of the Category 2 climbs with about 45 kilometers to go in the stage. We'll start seeing some attacking from the break, but in general, most things that are happening in the break is we see riders like Andreas Vendrami coming out the back with Rudy Mollard, Nico Denz and Casado come out the back from EF Education, but Nico Denz, we're going to see his mug a little bit later in this stage, so he must have suffered going up this first Category 2 climb that Rimko Evnopoul was doing the bulk of the work on when the climb started proper with tax from Chris Hart. Chris Hamilton, excuse me, and Remco having the pull pulling things back. Now the Belgian rider from Pseudo Quickstep, he spent a ton of time on the front, and that's only from 95 kilometers to go. I didn't get to see what Remco having the pull was doing throughout the first 65 kilometers of this stage when it was rolling. Whenever the climb is, whenever this course is rolling like this, that means attacks are happening left and right, and it means it's incredibly difficult on the peloton. That's why we saw it in pieces at 95 kilometers to go. All right, we're getting up to the top of the second category of climb, the, the KOM here, and we see Remco having the pool get maximum points. They'll drop down the backside. We're going back and looking at the peloton. We'll see Albacine de Kunic is still on the front going up over this climb. Now we're coming into the sprint, intermediate sprint competition, and we're going to see here that it's Jimmy Johnson that gets maximum points and keeps some points away from Remco Evnipol. Guys, Remco Evnipol's won two stages here. The Vuelta Espanyes wore the race leader's red jersey. He is wearing the polka dot jersey right now, and he had a chance Big time chance if he won this sprint competition here, intermediate sprint competition line. He's got a lot of chance of getting big time threat for the green jersey here at the Vuelta España because they're all mountain stages coming with the exception of the penultimate stage. It's going to be incredibly hard, not ideal for Caden Groves. And then, of course, the last stage here at the Vuelta España is going to be more ideal for a sprinter like Caden Groves, but doesn't leave a lot of opportunities for Albacine de Kunic rider Groves to gain points. So today they're trying to do damage control. Not a very good ideal, but at least Jimmy Johnson did a solid job of taking away maximum points from Remco Evnipol, who just finished in the middle of his group and gave up some points here at Intermediate Sprint. 
That probably means Remco Evenepoel remembers that first week of the Vuelta when he was going for those time bonus sprints against Caden Groves, and Caden Groves backed off just a little bit, gave Remco Evenepoel six second bonus and allowed him first on that sprint. Now Remco Evenepoel's repaying the favor, not sprinting and not fighting against Jimmy Johnson for the sp intermediate sprint point competition. Now we hit the last and final climb 15 kilometers ago. We see Jimmy Johnson still solo. He's throwing in a big effort here for Albacine de Kunick. We got two riders coming behind. Nico Denz and Rui Costa are chasing Jimmy Johnson. And then when the climb starts proper for the rest of the breakaway, companion Santiago Betrago is going to attack out of this group. He's going to bridge across. Nico Denz is going to get dropped. Jimmy Johnson is going to get caught. And Santiago Butrago and Rui Costa are going to drop Jimmy Johnson as he's coming out the back, going back to the Remco Ebnepool led chase group. Now up front, Santiago Butrago. He's been pulling on the front for a couple of kilometers. He's over it. We start seeing him argue just a little bit there with Rui Costa. And everyone knows in the professional peloton, and I told you I was teammates with Rui Costa, that Rui Costa is a wheel sucker. There's no other way to put it. He is cagey. He never pulls more than he has to pull. And when they're going up this climb, it's not even going to be one time that Santiago Butrago is going to be upset with Rui Costa. He's going to look back again and start arguing again with the Intermarche Portuguese rider. But again, Rui Costa is like, I'm not going to pull up this climb. No way. I'm sitting on your wheel. So Santiago Butrago is going to keep pulling. Now we're going to be just under two kilometers to go to the summit of this climb. And then we're going to see the next big attack. It's coming from Bora Hansgrohe's Leonard Kamna. Kenma's going to throw in a huge acceleration. And look at the back of the group. Remco Abnepool looks like he's struggling a little bit gapped off. Now the Belgian rider is going to do some weird stuff. He's going to take a bottle, start adjusting his glasses, and ride back up to this group of four riders in front of him to make five chasing the three that are going up the road. But I can't tell you for sure what's happening to Remco Abnepool because he looks like he's good physically, but yet he's at the back getting dropped and he's not able to follow the attacks from Santiago Butrago at the bottom who bridged up. And now Leonard Camno is bridging up with under two kilometers to go. We're going to get up to about 1.1 kilometer to go. Santiago Butrago and Rui Costa are going to start arguing again. And that's why we see Leonard Camna bridge up to these two guys to put three in the front group. Leonard Camna wastes no time. He goes right around the left side, starts pulling hard, pulls about 200 meters on the front, and then he wants Rui Costa to come through. That's why you see him waving his arm, but Rui Costa's not going to help Leonard Kamna either on this final climb. So Leonard Kamna's getting a little upset, then he's going to back off, and we're going to see an attack from Leonard Kamna followed just at the summit there from Santiago Butrago, who will go over the top of the KOM with a little bit of gap with Leonard Kamna and Rui Costa chasing Hart. They'll bring him back straight after the top of the climb there. Then we see Leonard Kamna throw in a massive attack, coming up the left side with some speed with Santiago Butrago on the front and with Rui Costa sitting second. Leonard Kamna's getting a gap on Santiago Butrago as he's starting to drop down this final descent and he's coming into the finish of today's stage with just about under four kilometers to go, but he's got to make it down the technical descent. We see Santiago Butrago's had enough of Rui Costa sitting on him as we see him look back, and then finally Rui Costa comes into the chase and starts pulling hard. We're at about three kilometers to go. It's a hard left turn. Leonard Kamna's going to go into the corner and realize that it's too sharp and he can't make the corner so he's going to set the bike up straight get on the brakes hard get into the grass and then crash to avoid the fencing there the bob wire fencing he'll crash and right as he's crashing we see all of a sudden it's Rui Costa and Santiago Butrago that are passing through the corner that means Leonard Camden's left on the side of the road we see Shimano help there on the motorcycle give a big push to Leonard Camden who luckily didn't have his bike broken as Leonard Camden was trying to catch back up to the two riders in front now Rui Costa Costa's looking back at Santiago Butrago, who won't help Rui Costa coming down the descent. Rui Costa's getting all kinds of frustrated now with Santiago Butrago. Payback is, well, you guys all know the saying of that, but this is a family channel, so I'll keep it clean. Rui Costa finally, after arguing some more with Santiago Butrago, who knows Leonard Camner's coming, starts taking a pull with just about two kilometers to go. That isn't enough speed there to hold off Leonard Camner as he comes back up to this group of two to make three guys in the front. Now, if I back the film up just a little bit, going over the top of the KOM, Remco Avnapool was pulling hard over the KOM and doing most of the descent. 
Had a little bit of help back there, but not a ton as he's been pulling throughout this whole stage 15 of the Vuelta to España, tacking left and right and pulling guys around like crazy. Now the gap up to these front group of threes, about 25, 30 seconds as we're coming into the final kilometers. Now up front with one kilometer to go, we're going to see these front group of three start playing some cat and mouse as they spread across the road. All of a sudden, Rui Costa gets fished to the front as we're coming into the last left turn of this final stage 15. Rui Costa's on the front. He did a little acceleration to play a little bit with Kamna just coming into that left, but it failed a little bit. He backed off, and then for some reason, Leonard Kamna moves over to the left, and he gets stuck at the front of the peloton. Now all three are lined up. Leonard Kamna's first, Rui Costa's second, Santiago Butrago's third. They're all looking over their shoulder because with 300 meters to go, look, there it is. Remco having the pull train back there is coming full gas. He's in the picture. He's got a chance if these guys play some more cat and mouse with 300 meters to go. But with 200, Santiago Butrago throws in attack and he jumps from the left to the right side and starts accelerating on the pedals. About 25 kilometers later, we're going to see Leonard Kamna with 175 kilometers just there under. He's going to start his attack on the left side of the fencing, and Kamna's going full gas. This is going to hold off any chance that Remco Evnepoel has from the back of catching this front group of three. Kamna's going full gas. He's going to get all the way into about 75 meters to go. Then Rui Acosta, he's going to jump out off to the right side off of Leonard Kamna's wheel. Luckily for him, Santiago Butrago went too far right and left the gap open for Rui Acosta as he's accelerating and they're coming up to bump. 50 meters to go. He's making up some massive gains there on Leonard Kamna. 25 meters to go. They're both even. 10 meters to go. Rui Costa looks over to the left. He knows he's got today's stage 15-1. So with just about a meter or two before he crosses the line, he sits up and celebrates a victory for Intermarche. Congratulations, Rui Costa. Again, the KG veteran sitting on the wheel, wheel sucking throughout most of this stage 15, rode it spectacularly in style and abused everybody won today's stage. Leonard Kamna gets second on the stage, Santiago Butrago third, and then Remco Evnepoel will pull the group of the breakaway guys back that were chasing up to the line to get himself into the top five here on stage 15 of the Vuelta a España. Now, today's stage, tactically a bit of a nightmare for Albacine de Kunic to start pulling on today's stage. Didn't make any sense. And on top of that, to throw a little salt in the wound up here on the butterfly effect, well, Jimmy Johnson, you got 10th on today's stage. As soon as you got dropped out of the front group, you should have just sat up and gone back so that Caden Groves back there can get a couple more points on today's stage without having you in front of him finishing 10th on the stage. Ram Koevnapul, you didn't win today's stage, but you did finish in front of the breakaway companions to get fourth on today's stage. So you probably should have backed off a little bit too. Let the guys that were sitting on your wheel get in front of you so you can lose some more points in the green jersey classification here. That way there later in these mountain stages, you don't have Albacine de Kunic chasing you too. Unless, of course, you want the green jersey. If you wanted the green jersey, well, then today's ride was good. But if that was the case, then you probably should have sprinted at the intermediate sprint competition, too. So it's kind of a knucklehead move. Now, why didn't this strategy work for Remco Evnepoel winning here on stage 15 like it did on yesterday's stage 14? Well, that's simple. The climbs here were super small compared to yesterday's two especial climbs where he could just ride everyone off the wheel, make them suffer, and then the form of having the best legs and the best climber in the group make it a whole lot easier to ride everyone off on the climb when you're doing speeds of 20 and 25 kilometers an hour versus when you're on these category two climbs. I can show you pictures where they're doing 30 plus kilometers an hour, which means the draft in the back is very good. We all know Remco Evnepoel spent more time on the front of today's peloton than anybody else in that breakaway of 15 riders, so that starts to wear your legs out a little bit more because there's more wind, more push, and all the riders on your wheel are getting a better draft. That's why we see Remco Evnepoel and Pseudo Quickstep still continue to be knuckleheads with their tactics racing here at the Vuelta España. You can't pull all day when the speeds are higher. Wait, save it, wait for the bigger mountain stages, or if you're going to race full gas on a stage like today, have multiple teammates around you so they can do more work and bring you all the way into these last Category 2 climbs so Remco Evnepoel can light it up without having to be on the front doing 30 kilometers an hour up a climb with everybody getting a free draft like we saw in today's Stage 15. That's why Remco Evnepoel lost today's stage. Anyways, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys for Stage 16 of the Vuelta España 2023.